It's time to take your business to the next level, the boss level. These are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Now let's welcome your host, Ann Ganguza. Hey everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. The AI and Voice series. I'm your host, Ann Ganguza, and today I have a couple of very special guests with me to talk about current development in the AI voice space and the very important topic of contracts and negotiation. Welcome to the show, Jim Kennelly, owner of Lotus Productions in New York City. For over 30 years, Jim has specialized in finding the right voice for all kinds of media, from commercial work to podcasts and smart speakers. Jim and his team have operated as one of New York's premier one-stop shops for voiceover casting, directing, and recording. Welcome to the show, Jim. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you, Ann. It's my pleasure to be a part of VO Boss. Uh, we've listened to the program and uh, happy to uh, share some of our, our ideas today. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, we also have Nicholas Saka, Chief of Operations of VoiceSpark, a company that helps people learn and understand the power of voice and speech technology through stories from entrepreneurs, developers, and individuals on the journey. He's also been involved with creating over 400 Alexa skills. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> Welcome, Nicholas, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks a bunch, Ann, for having us on. Uh, I really appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to to our conversation. So I guess my first question would be, the both of you are on the bleeding edge of technology. I love saying that because (laughs) I like to consider myself a girl on the edge of technology. So I'd love to hear about how you guys first became involved in working with AI and voices and how you know each other and started working together. Jim? Sure. Uh Sure. My company, Lotus Productions, we started looking at uh, AI about four or five years ago. We knew mm-hmm. it was uh, there was a transitional moment in the industry. I've been around the industry for quite a long time. So if you look at the voiceover industry 30, 20, 10 years ago, it's far different than it is today. And so we knew going forward 10, 20, 30 years into the future, the industry would uh, be, be involved in a transition. So we wanted to be one of the companies that made the bridge between this new industry and the voiceover talent industry, the casting industry, the production industry that we all understood already. So we jumped right in. Nick, what about you? So this all started for me back in uh, 2014. It was the uh, fall slash winter of 2014, and I was part of Alexa's beta program, and I got one of the original Echoes. And I fell in love with it. So at that point, I uh, went ahead and started developing for it. And then I found out over time that I just loved using these sort of devices. And mm-hmm. the and the things that really compelled me about these devices were actors, voiceover actors, people like that who are lending their voice. It wasn't just Alexa. You know, everybody mm-hmm. could say, you know, uh, Alexa, do this or do that, and she'll reply. But whenever you got into the nitty-gritty of these different skills, these applications Mm -hmm. that people were creating, these brands were creating, and they were experimenting with voiceover actors, Mm -hmm. with synthetic voices, that's whenever it really started to hit home for me. And just recently, I got a job with a company out of uh, Sweden called WanderWord. I am their chief evangelist, which means I'm going to be going around talking about how we can make interactive stories more accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. But a part of that is going to be incorporating voiceover actors into into that spectrum so that it's almost going to be like a resurgence of like what happened in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be interactive. Like audio drama. Like like audio drama. Yeah, audio drama. Definitely looking forward to that. So that's a little bit about me. And yeah, I've I've, uh, done some development work, but I'm starting to gear away from that Mm -hmm. and do more of the beta testing, Q&A, quality assurance type stuff, just to make sure that the right product's getting out at the right point. So now, Ann, you see how Nick and I come together and uh-huh. we, we see this as an opportunity, mm-hmm. uh, a new chance for uh, like tech forward voiceover talents. What we're starting to see as sonic talents uh, mm-hmm. enter, into, enter, enter into a brand new field. Sonic talents. I like that. I like that. So that's a sonic, like a sonic brand. Mm-hmm. There yeah, you go. Tech forward, tech mm-hmm. forward voices, sonic talents. That's who a producer like Nick is looking for. Yeah. Hey, Jim, I'm probably going to end up stealing that. Sonic talents. 
<laughs> Hashtag Sonic, Sonic Talents. <laughs> Sonic Talents. It's, Let, it's cool. I love it. it. I love it. So what would you say makes a good AI voice or a good talent to, for an AI voice? What are the qualities? Well, um, I would say, uh, to be honest, that I would look at more of the experience, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to ask a voice assistant, what's the capital of New Mexico? You know, it's going to shoot you out an answer. It's no problem. Mm -hmm. But if you are going to open up a skill and you're going to want to choose your own adventure per se, you're going to want something that is going to complement the subject matter. And Got that's it. And, and for me, that's where these that that's where the sonic talents, sonic branding, and all that kind of comes in mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. jingles. From the uh, creaky door opening up as you're going down the stairs mm -hmm. in the background, those sort of things all come into play. So all different types of voice talent then, let's say, are going yes. to be needed or used or would be would be actually beneficial in lending yeah. to an AI voice. Got yeah, it. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be pivotal for companies to capitalize on sonic branding and also the sonic talents because that's going to be the way it's going to stick inside of the end user's mind. If you want them to come back, mm -hmm. that's going to be the way it's going to be done. See, the problem is whenever you're talking about your smartphone, you have 100 apps on mm -hmm. your smartphone, 20 of which you really use. Right. Whenever you move to voice, you probably have 600 skills enabled on your Alexa device, but really you only use six of them. And why? Because those six have something that brings you back, that draws you back into mm. the mix. So for me, that's where I think it's going to be just extremely pivotal for uh, companies and brands to uh, maximize the sonic impact. Jim, I think I just made up another one, Sonic Impact. <laughs> I like it. Sonic Impact. SI, the then, new SI. <laughs> then, all right, so then my question I think now is, there's a difference between a voice that might record a bunch of prompts for, let's say, an Alexa app, and then there's also an AI-generated voice. They're two different things, mm -hmm. right? Yep, of so, course. So you work with both types of voices in terms of your app development, or? Oh, yeah, yeah. because uh, sometimes... Sometimes you just can't get the voice talent, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, like, Amazon has, like, 27 free voices that they just let you use. It's called Amazon Poly, and there's, mm -hmm. like, a free tier. Mm -hmm. So you can go through, you could get a little, like, a, a young man's voice or a British man's voice, mm -hmm. and you can have all these different things kind of play the different characters in your voice experience. But where you really see it shine is whenever you have actual voiceover talent that's accounting for most of the interactions. Ah, right. I there like that, a, yeah. Yeah, there really isn't any piece of software or hardware in the world that can automatically do what a voice talent can do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and certainly, uh, but so voice AI needs coders to mm -hmm. build uh, this, this structure in the systems, but it also needs voice actors and sound engineers to make sure it sounds right. And that's the exciting part for us. Uh, we see these two fields coming together, mm -hmm. and then we're going to grow together over the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. There'll be an amazing explosion of opportunity. Very interesting. So then I think most people, when they think of AI voices, they think of AI-generated voices, but they're not really necessarily thinking, oh, there's two different, right? There's my prompts that I'm reading or that I'm using as an app, and then there's an AI-generated voice, which most people would say might sound too robotic or you can't, you know, you can't get the emotion that you need from it. And so maybe with the mix of these two, we get a, a really rewarding, let's say, interactive experience in a voice app or something that can really yeah. help. Wow. Yeah, they'll be they'll be used to complement each other. Mm -hmm. It'll mm -hmm. it'll it'll work in your as a career, as a voice talent, it'll work in tangent. You'll work together. There'll be your live experience. Right. And then there'll be your voice dub synthetic experience, but you'll be paid equitably on both sides. Ah there's a great point there. Paid equitably. Now, you know, there's lots of fear out there in the voiceover industry that AI voices obviously are going to take away our jobs. And what would you say to help quell that fear? And not to mention that there is some stuff in the media now about somebody's voice being used for an AI voice that had not given permission. So, you know, what are the positives of, of voice talent embracing the technology and creating a voice app on Alexa or generating an AI 
voice or having a company do that for them? What are the advantages of that? And where do you see that that going? Well, it, it is the very early stages of the monetization mm-hmm. of AI. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have to uh, have a little trust in whether it's Nick or myself and my company. And that we are starting conversations, we have been over the last few years, with agents and managers, mm-hmm. with individual talents, and start to give them advice about this industry and how it's developing. Because it, it's all in transformation. It's it's a brand new industry. Right. And so, uh, or a relatively young industry. And so we have to approach it that way. And there'll be hurdles. There are challenges. But uh, as far as we go at Lotus, uh, we go right back to the same experience that voice talents and agents and managers have always had. Let's look at the job. Is it an IVR? Is it radio mm-hmm. spots? Is it an Alexa skill? How long are you going to use it for? How much time do you need in studio to create these prompts? And so when we go about building a voice dub. We have a small set of professional voice talents this year mm-hmm. that we've been making voice dubs for. But then we we approach the negotiation just like way we've always approached negotiation with voice talent. Uh, and we're very specific. It's important to have that uh, those contracts worked out. Uh, Nick, what do you look at when you start to approach bringing voices into your projects? Well, uh, definitely got to take a look at the subject matter, right? Like, mm-hmm. what what are we trying to accomplish here? Are, are we trying to tell a story? Are we trying to sell something? Mm-hmm. Are we trying to do both? Recently, my company uh, just released a, uh, a skill that was geared to help children understand mathematics better. And it, it's called MathCaster, and it's on the Amazon Skill Store. Now, the cool thing about this is, is that a child uh, plays the part of a wizard and they have to ascend to the level of a, the math caster. And the only way you do that is by going through these different levels. Now, whenever we looked at that, we thought to ourselves, okay, if we put an adult's voice in there, it could probably turn turn kids off because we wanted to create an atmosphere where we had a child's voice talking to children between the ages of six and 10. That way... They could relate to the child and they could Mm -hmm. relate to the voice and they would be more geared to come back and play it again. If it was an adult's voice, it would be something that would be like talking down to them in a sense, or it could be perceived as that. So that's what we try to do is we try to analyze everything across the board and say, I don't know if this is going to be a good fit. And yeah, so we've had some success with the, uh, with the skill. It's, uh, it's been live now for a little while and we're, we're looking at this skill to be a success story for our company. So now the, the big question is, and I know, Jim, you, you started to uh, allude to what things need to be, I guess, mapped out in a contract, so to speak. When you are looking to, to hire a voice talent to either voice a, a, a skill or, you know, generate and what you call a voice dub. OK, I'm going to call that my AI voice is, is a voice dub, correct? Um, what sorts of things do we need to take a look at in terms of voice talent for us that, that will help protect us? Like, how will I know that my voice is only going to be used in that app and maybe not put into another app or similar to, I guess, the way voice talent right now want to know, is my voice being used in this commercial for this amount of time in this particular you know place? And what if I hear it somewhere else? And then how do I spec that out or what things do I need to look for? Right. To make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, it's an excellent question, Anne. When a a voice talent decides to have their voice cloned to make a voice dub, they uh, they are, in fact, investing in their the voice value of the future. Mm -hmm. But understanding that, appreciating that, when the negotiations that we've been involved in, yes, we've had very high-end negotiations with big brands, and then we're very major brands. Then we're we're very specific about. The, the term of use, like one year, two years, three years. What you have to understand is, again, it's, it's an infancy in the industry, mm-hmm. and it's going to change a lot. So mm-hmm. the voice dub we can make this year is going to be even better. You can make a better one three years from now. So even if you, you make a contract that's for mm-hmm. three years, it's still going to improve. The engines that create the voice dubs are going to be improving as the industry goes forward. So you're really negotiating something very finite. You want to have the same sort of contract that you have with any manager or any agent. It's Mm -hmm. for one year and it's for use on IVR only, or it's only used on this app. And then you have that, uh, you you should always feel confident to go into a negotiation, whether, you know, if you have an, if you're in the union, great. If you have a manager, great. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, an agent, great. But if you're an independent artist, which many, many of the people listening to VO Boss are, Mm -hmm. uh, 
You should have the confidence to come into the negotiation to say, hey, let's be real specific about how this is going to be used. Mm -hmm. First, it has to do with like, how long is it going to be used? Where is it going to be used? And then get it written down, whether you're negotiating with Amazon, or you're negotiating with Nick, or you're negotiating with Lotus Productions. You can be real specific mm -hmm. about where this is going to be used. And if you have to back away from the negotiation, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to back away. You shouldn't be afraid to say no. But mm -hmm. you also shouldn't be afraid to ask to, for the clients to be very specific. Because we've had the opportunity to work with many different developers around the globe. Uh, we've talked to people in China, Australia, mm -hmm. Tel Aviv, Warsaw, Canada, United States. And everybody has a different style of business. Mm -hmm. And they're allowed to run their business any way they'd like. But as a company, Lotus Productions is, is able to stop and say, well, we're happy to negotiate a deal with your group. But this other group, we're not interested in that. We're going to have to pass on that. And they'll mm -hmm. find a voice somewhere but they're not going to find a voice through us. Yeah, I agree with uh, everything that Jim said right there. Whenever you're creating these experiences, you got to make sure that the voiceover person is uh, adequately compensated for their time and also comfortable with their voice being used on almost 100 million devices nationwide, just in the U.S. alone. So I think the ball is actually in their court. Mm. So if there's something that they want, something that they don't want, something that they need, uh, we need to work to facilitate that as much as possible. So then I guess my question would be, if there is a, a voice dub, right, or an AI voice created, mm -hmm. how is it that we, you know, I guess we would need to specify in a contract how to not have that voice say certain, like what if, what if it might say something that would be damaging to our brand or, you know, something that would be completely right. off brand, how that would be written into the specs? Yeah, but also these things are really uh, specced out whenever you mm. take a look at them. Mm -hmm. The the flow chart, the script for the uh, voice application is very, very detailed, detailed and very specced out. So there shouldn't be a situation where your voice is used or manipulated in a way to where you would say something out of context. Everything down to the last, okay, thanks for using our skill. That's all scripted and, and all specced out ahead of time. Mm. But what about if it becomes a, a, a voice dub where it's generating the voice and all you have to do is, I guess, type into the prompt and make it say whatever you want, similar to what, you know, has been going on recently oh. where there was that TikTok issue mm -hmm. where people could type whatever words they wanted that voice to say. So how is that protected in terms of, you know, in a contract? I don't know if it is. I have to kick that one over to Jim. <laughs> yeah, in, no problem. In the in the contracts that we're negotiating, mm -hmm. we're very specific about whether it's the AI voice or just the, the prompt voices are used for that one product and 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 and, and no other. There's no further reselling. There's no mm -hmm. redistribution of the voice. Uh, and I think what we always talk about with the, the new people in the industry, the people that we've worked with in the industry, the agents and the managers, we want to use the language that everybody's familiar with. So at one point, conflicts was a very big part of voiceovers. Then we saw it sort of drip, drift away a little bit mm -hmm. in the 2010, 2012. But I really see conflicts coming back again. So if you're the uh, synthetic yes, voice yes, of right. a division of Best mm -hmm. Buy, you're the Best Buy computer voice, mm -hmm. well, you know, PC Richards and other distributors of electronics products will stay away from you. Right. But because you are going to be exclusive to Best Buy, you're going to see your rate go higher. So we're going to, mm. we really like the idea of, of bringing back the the language that we know into the contracts that for we're AI. going to take yeah. into for AI. I uh -huh. think it works better. Uh, you know, we have to think about the ethical parts, the equitable, you know, equitable rates. Uh, mm -hmm. It, 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 it's, it's important, but it, finding the common language to bring the two industries together, uh, I think, is going to help get over some of these hurdles. You know, there's always mistakes. When, when cable started, people made commercials and it was supposed to air on TBS, but then all of a sudden mm -hmm. spots in Atlanta ended up in Chicago and they ended up in St. Louis and there was sort of a hubbub about it. But eventually the industry figured it out and, and voiceover talents were protected or received better rates for mm -hmm. the bigger exposure. What's important to us and what we're trying to emphasize to agents, managers, individual talents is that you start to use the same language that you knew for negotiating voiceovers as it mm -hmm. has been over the last 10, 20, 30 years. And we bring that language into the new industry that's, that's emerging, this AI voice combination. 
industry. So just like in the experience we all know in the voiceover industry, if and when a client selects the talent's voice for a specific application, we would bring the opportunity to the client and agree upon the compensation and the usage restrictions and then move forward with their vocal likeness into this new AI field. We can be successful in this and it's just a matter of creating these partnerships. Love that. I love that. Well, thank you so much. What advice would you give to voice talent, right, moving forward in terms of, like, how should they be positioning themselves to be current and relevant as the voiceover industry moves forward? What would, what would be your best advice to them? Yeah, like, learn, 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 read, read, read. It's better mm-hmm. for talent to secure your place in this new industry than to just be waiting for it to come to you. Get involved. Start following it online. Start reading. There are some really good books about uh, AI, about conversational mm-hmm. design. And the more you're able to understand it, when you start to negotiate for, for yourself or to co-negotiate with an agent, you're going to be more successful. You're going to have a contract that helps secure your your brand, your voice. Great, great advice, Nick. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with Jim uh, 100% on that one. But also, I would say that what needs to happen is go out and take a look at the industry leaders in the voice application uh, field, right? There are certain companies out there that are doing it better than others. And what you want to do is, you know, go ahead, contact them, you know, uh, let them know you're out there so that whenever they are looking for voiceover talent to build these uh, voice applications, they'll come a knocking because they know you, they know you, they've established a relationship with you, uh, even if it is through email, but just reach out. And I would have to say, uh, you know, one of my greatest tools is LinkedIn. By using LinkedIn, you're able to, to reach people in a professional manner, unlike any other social media platform. So by all means, uh, do a little bit of research or on these companies and who they are who are creating these voice applications and go out and introduce yourself. Excellent advice. And I think I would also like to say that we need good voice actors to make great AI voices. And I think that if the contract specifications are in place and, you know, all the, you know, the I's are, <laughs> the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, that I think if you are a great voice actor, you can also make a great AI voice because obviously the the whole or voice dub or even voice application, no matter what, we need to sound more like humans That's <laughs> to right. make those apps and to make, you know, those voices more engaging and, and, and interactive. And I think we're certainly not stopping any development development in AI by stomping our feet and being afraid of AI taking our jobs away or, or any type of voice app. So great advice, guys. I, I really appreciate you being on the show with us today. And I hope you bosses out there really take their advice, go out and educate yourself. Of course, I've got a bunch more episodes here in the series on AI and voice. That's what I'm trying to accomplish here, hoping to help educate the community about AI so that we can move forward. Um, with our businesses and grow and evolve with the technology. So thank you so much, Jim and Nick, for joining us. And um, we definitely appreciate your wisdom and hope to be working with you guys at some point in the future. Well, great. Thank you, Anne. A pleasure. All right. You guys, I'm going to give a great big shout out to our sponsor, IPDTL. You too can communicate and connect like bosses. Find out more at IPDTL.com. You guys have a great week and we'll see you next week. Bye. Goodbye. So long, voices. Great to be with you. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at voboss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies, and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL.